Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv, and today I'd like to discuss with you some of the things I've learned while experimenting with Adobe's Wallaby program, which allows you to take a Flash CS5 animation and export it to HTML, JavaScript, and CSS animation. We'll just call that family of friends HTML5 for now. Um, so what you see here is one of my demos that I first built, and I found that doing uh, vector and bitmap image based animations like scaling, moving, fading, following motion guides, basic masks, uh, these things all work really quite well. Um, Adobe has a full list of features that are supported that I'll show you where you can find that. Uh, but for the most part, with a little bit of tweaking, uh, you can get a lot of stuff to run really, really smooth. Um, I have another experiment here too. You guys have probably seen this if you've been following me on Twitter. Uh, what I'm going to do is just tell you, A, where you can get Twitter yeah, where can you get Twitter? I don't know. Um, where you can get Wallaby um, and then show you how easy it is to use with Flash CS5 and then show you a few different uh, optimization techniques and some things to look out for. So without any further ado, let's go to the Adobe Labs page and if you go to technology slash Wallaby, I'll link this up, you can download the Wallaby preview. Now that word preview there is very important. This isn't an official released program that they're charging money for. You know, it's their first attempt at saying, hey, look where we're headed with this. Um, and where they're headed is really quite great. You know, this is really going to have a lot of people shut up for a while saying, oh, Flash don't work on the iPhone. Um, well, you can now do Flash animations that will work on the iPhone and the iPad. And furthermore, this is really the first tool that allows you to do these animations easily without hacking your way through zillions of lines of code. Um, what's going on here behind the scenes with this tool is quite amazing and really has a lot of impact on a lot of people's futures, I believe. We'll talk about that more in the blog post. So once you get Wallaby, you may want to read over some of the uh, technical requirements and issues. So for the release notes, they have down here the features that are supported. Um, you could read this list or you could just imagine you were using uh, Flash three or four. In fact, if Adobe were to go up into the attic, into that box that says Macromedia Old, and take out Flash 3 and just slap on this Wallaby thing, you know, we'd all probably be in good shape. Because there are a lot of features that aren't supported, like action scripts and uh, blend modes and filters and all these great things we love from Flash. But this is a limitation of the HTML5 spec and JavaScript and what can be done on that side of things. It's in no means a limitation of Flash or Wallaby. All right, so let's just go into Flash right now. And I want to show you that uh, for those demos that you saw, they are all just old school timeline animation. For someone who's so used to using the GreenSock tweening platform, uh, it really was something else to have to add a bunch of frames for my pausing and you know move keyframes around. Uh, but, you know what, it's going to work really well for a lot of people. Um, to take an existing FLA file that you have, let me just go to my simple file here, and convert it to one of these HTML5 animations, it's really quite simple. You're just going to open up Wallaby, you're going to browse for the file that you want to convert. Now again, this is going to be a Flash CS5 FLA. And in my simple demo folder, I just want to show you that I have simple.fla and a previous Swift export. So I select the FLA source file. Notice that's all that's in that folder. And then I'm going to hit convert. Now take out your stopwatch and watch what happens here. We're going to just, oh, that's good. We're just going to hit save and in an instant, boom, Safari opens up and there's my animation playing. You'll notice that it's smooth as butter. It runs really, really well. I'm very impressed. And if we right click and do an inspect element here, we can actually see all the different resources that this file is using. Um, here under the file size, you'll see that the document size is very small. There's a 5K style sheet. Images is insignificant. Scripts, 72K. Well, that's because they're using jQuery here. And uh, that library is just really big. You know, in a world where Flash developers are limited to 25 or 30K for a single Swift file, uh, to know that there's 72K of overhead out of the box, that might trouble some people. Uh, but in defense, a lot of sites are using jQuery by default anyway, so that's going to be loaded there. And uh, we're going to see how that pans out.
Um, but you'll see that we have the jQuery JavaScript file, we have a CSS file here, and we have some other JavaScript, which is very Wallaby specific, and then we have this SVG. So we have this uh, scalable vector graphic here that just moves and spins, and it's very lightweight. It's less than 1K. It's very basic. And we also have our gradient file here. So it's really neat that we can go through and investigate all these different assets. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the HTML structure here, um, but as a simple tip, I would recommend that you give all your symbols instance names so that when you're going through the HTML where you see square MC, that's the instance name of the symbol that's being rotated. So if somebody needs to add more interactivity to this via JavaScript, um, when they go through your code, they'll know what these assets are named and where they're being used. So enough of that nerd stuff. Let's go back to Flash. And I just want to show you um, a few ways that your Wallaby content is smartly optimized and some of the restrictions. Let's do some fun stuff first. Um, mask.fla. With masks, you can move the object that is um, being revealed by the mask, but you cannot move the mask itself. So here, if I want to test my mask file out, let's just go back to Wallaby. Let's browse for it real quick. And we're going to go to Wallaby Demos, Mask, select the FLA file. I've already done this before, so there's some stuff here. And then we'll just hit Convert and we will save the HTML file, replace the existing one, and there you go. So some people, you know, said, oh, you can't do mask, you can't do this. Well, you can do a mask. And this, of course, is in fact all HTML. It's not a Swift, and it runs really nice. But you gotta be careful. You don't wanna have a lot going on um, behind your masks, because it can get a little nasty. Moving forward, let's talk about something like shape tweens, okay? Adobe recommends that you use them sparingly, because what happens is every frame in your shape tween gets exported as a separate graphic, uh, a separate SVG file. So let's take shape tween here, and I'm going to wallabyize it. I'm going quick just so you guys can see a lot in a short amount of time. And let's browse for that guy right there. We're going to go to my demos, and we will go to shape tween. I'm going to select the FLA, and we're going to convert it, and we will replace the existing version. Yes. And there you go. So there's the shape tween. You'll notice it's running a little on the slower side. Um, and now if we go to inspect our resources here, I'm going to show you that look at all these different SVG files. For each frame of that animation, we have a separate graphical asset. So as you can see over time, those are going to add up and add weight. Even though each one of them is less than 1K, you know, very quickly your assets are going to be... Uh, you know, taking up size. We have 20k of images for this very simple shape tween. Let's contrast this with uh, what happens in Flash. I export this as a Swift and the entire thing is less than 1k. There's no necessary overhead of jQuery or CSS or any of that stuff. So, be warned. Alright, now inside of nested and buttons, let me just show you quickly that you can have a simple button. So this symbol right here, if I double click on it, we have an up, over, and down state, okay? And if we go to save this FLA, you always have to save your FLA first. Let's go back to Wallaby, and we're going to browse inside of my Wallaby Demos folder for nested and buttons, and that's the FLA I want to choose. Hit convert, and again, we're going to save, and we're going to replace. And whoa, what's this? Well, this is a cached version of something that I was doing earlier. And a little warning, when you're working in Safari, it doesn't always refresh this litany of files that needs to be loaded, whether it's the CSS, the HTML, the JavaScript, or the SVGs. So you may be like, that's nothing like I'm expecting. Well, you can do a quick little refresh, and then there's my button. You have the up, the over, and the down state. And it's built just like a regular simple button symbol in Flash. You'll notice you're not getting the mouse hover cursor here. And if you want to add any actions at all to this button, you need to go into the HTML and add some jQuery script that will loop through the assets, find this one, and put the right code on it. Now, if we go to one of our resources here, Wallaby Technical Tips, or this one right here, How to Add Interactive Content, 
I'll link you guys up to this, but Adobe has provided a very basic example of how you would access that button and put some code on it. Uh, you may have a tutorial coming from me shortly about that. Um, and as a side note, if anybody out here is a jQuery um, enthusiast and you, you love it, I would say experiment with Wallaby a bit because there's going to be a lot of Flash people who can do the animation really well, but jQuery and JavaScript is so beyond their comprehension that you know they're going to need people to make their buttons clickable or add interactivity so that when you roll over a button, maybe another movie clip scales or does something simple like that. So this isn't only for Flash developers to get excited about. There's a lot of stuff that you JavaScript guys can really embrace, I hope. All right, so for simple animation, you don't have to code everything all the time. You can build it in Flash and then add a layer of interactivity on top of it. All right, so there's your simple button just to show you up, over, and down. Next, what I want to do is show you a little bit about how Flash reuses assets, okay? Let's get rid of that. Here I have a very simple square, okay? And I also have a symbol called four squares which has four more instances of that symbol and just to show you that if I have a whole bunch of these on the stage here let's just do a save um, just like flash wouldn't create additional graphics it would reuse the symbol um, wallaby does the same thing in its conversion so let's uh, take that file one more time let's select it let's convert it and we're going to save right there and we will replace. That gets a little old. So there's my file with a bunch of squares. There's one square here and then there's four squares and four squares. If we inspect this element, I want to show you that it's smart. It's only using one of those square elements and that's pretty cool that it's not making seven or eight of them, okay? But what I want to point out is that if you do put a movie clip symbol inside of a button, it will make a duplicate of that very simple shape. So let me just illustrate that super quick here, okay? So here I have my square on the stage. Let me go into simple button, just add a layer beneath here and put a square, this is a movie clip, being put inside of a button. So now it's gonna look like this, all right? All right, so let's get this button onto the stage and take a look at what Wallaby will do. So let's save. I'm going to go back to Wallaby, and one thing I want to point out is if I keep testing the same file, I don't have to always browse for it. Just hit convert, and then we're just going to authorize resaving over the existing HTML file. And then so now, oh, what's that? Again, you want to probably refresh Safari every now and then. What you can do also, though, is under develop, you can say disable caches, and that's going to save you a lot of time. All right, so now you'll see that my interactive button has the square background. But my whole point of this being, if we inspect element, that in order to um, put that square inside the button, you'll see that we have our square, and then it made another copy right here called SVG block underscore one SVG. Okay, so a little bit duplicate action here. You want to, you know, just keep that in mind. It's not the end of the world. Uh, another thing you just saw too it was with all this HTML stuff. You know, all these items here, you can select them. You get your mouse cursor that shows up. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. You'd never have something like that happen with Flash. Nor in Flash could you pull graphics directly out and uh, put them into the browser bar and steal them so easily. So, always pros and cons to everything. Let's close this out. And what I want to show you also is a nested animation now. All right, so we've seen buttons, we've seen symbol reusability. Um, I'm going to take my the symbol here called square animation, and this symbol here has a nested timeline of a pulsing square. And just so I can show you that you can do some cool stuff here, I'm going to just add some keyframed animation. Let's just put jam in F6 and F6. We'll do some classic tweens. And in the middle frame here, let's just go over there. All right, so we have this very simple back and forth, all right? But once I save this, you'll see that in the finished product, when we convert this and save and replace off screen, um, oh yeah, good thing for my cache there. Uh, let's refresh. And now we have an animation being animated. So, you know, you can take all your flash timeline knowledge and do some pretty cool stuff. 
yeah, if you do a tint or a filter or a blend mode, those things aren't going to work. But for your average banner where you have three or four keyframe panels of messaging with an image, uh, it can work exceptionally well. In my next video, I'm going to show you the biggest bug that I encountered. I wanted to keep it separate so that people could see it right away. Um, there was one big issue I had with alpha fades, but we'll get there. But you'll see this animation is running really smoothly. Yeah, there's not a ton going on there. Um, if we go to inspect element, you know, the base resources aren't that big except for, you know, that jQuery stuff. So, you know, in this broadband age, maybe 72K in a whole bunch. I just know that you know, living in a world where a lot of the banner publishers are still requesting AS2, um, Flash, 8, Swifts, you know, this the, the intention here is going to be very specific for iPhone and iPad. Being that Firefox 3 and IE do not support a lot of the features that are being used here, um, you're really not going to do full website animation replacements here. This is just for those that very small number of devices that refuses to uh, play Flash, um, you're going to have a nice, decent backup here. All right, so I hope you guys are excited about what you can do. Um, let's go back, show you a few of those resources again. I think I covered everything I really wanted to. I know we're getting a little late here. Um, so you have information about adding interactive content. Um, the technical tips page, you really got to uh, check out some of uh, these discussions that are going on here and of course the uh, basic release notes where they go through all the different things that are supported and not and Adobe is very clear up front this is a pre-release and the targeted output is for iOS um, I tested a lot of my stuff on in Chrome and I found that some things work better in Chrome than Safari but at the end of the day we're really trying to get these Apple people so I'd say always test in Safari that's going to give you probably the closest representation of what's going to happen on an iOS device. All right, guys, I'm going to list some stuff on the blog. Check it out at snorkel.tv and definitely watch the next video on the biggest bug I found that was really annoying. But once you know about it, you'll be cool. All right. Bye bye.